Hi everyone. This video presents you with another example of proportions and confidence intervals and finding the correct sample size given a margin of error. As you may recall from an earlier video, we focused on a problem on the Gallatin River, which is a river in southwest Montana flowing out of Yellowstone Park. A small tributary, the Spanish Creek, flows into the Gallatin River just north of Bozeman, Montana. On the map, you can see the tributary right about here as it flows into the Gallatin River there. Bozeman is up in that direction right there. On the Spanish Creek is a ranch, the Flying D Ranch, and on that ranch is a bison breeding operation. The bison breeding operation is located oh, about in here on the Flying D. Byproducts of the operation, essentially the waste from the bison flows into the Spanish Creek, which flows into the Gallatin. So the question of interest, given that the Gallatin is a water source for Bozeman, uh, provides irrigation for ranchers, drinking water, is does the bison grazing on the Flying D, does it lower the quality of the water in the Spanish Creek and the Gallatin? The method that we used to determine that was we examined macroinvertebrates. Remember there's two types of macroinvertebrates. There is healthy or healthy indicators, which like the stonefly nymph, there are unhealthy indicators. Unhealthy just means that they're very tolerant of pollution. Healthy means they're sensitive to pollution. They would die off in this pollution. We collected a sample of bugs using uh, sane nets. Um, and then what we did is we constructed a confidence interval of the proportion of healthy indicators downstream. Upstream, recall that the proportion of healthy bugs was 0.4 or 40 percent. So 40 percent of the bugs upstream were healthy indicators. If that percentage goes down, then that would that would indicate that there is some sort of pollution occurring between upstream and downstream. So what we did is we constructed, in, in the earlier video, we constructed a 95 percent confidence interval for the proportion of all macroinvertebrates that are downstream that are healthy indicators. The 95% confidence interval, or any confidence interval for the proportion, is given by the formula. And the formula is given right here, the lower bound and the upper bound. It's important that you know why this is a confidence interval for a proportion. The data are qualitative. Are the bugs healthy indicators or not healthy indicators? Those are unordered categories. So that would be uh, categorical, uh, qualitative categorical data. Questions about sample size begin with the margin of error, which is given first. The margin of error in this formula is given by, essentially it's the part that's added or subtracted to the sample proportion. Remember the sample proportion is p hat. And then you add or subtract the margin of error, E we'll call that, from the sample proportion. Just a, just a side note, the square root portion, and I just want you to know the terminology, the square root portion of this standard error, or of the margin of error, is called the standard error. Essentially it's the standard deviation of the estimate is what it's called. So. There are two approaches which we went through in the earlier example to determining a sample size. The first approach assumes that you know no prior information about the proportion of healthy indicators in the in the river. No, no, no prior information about about the proportion, uh, the true proportion in the population. So suppose we'd like to estimate the proportion of healthy indicators that are downstream to with, within a margin of error of two percent. And 2% for the margin of error, recall, what you've got to do is you've got to write it as the decimal. So we're going to use 0.02 for 2%. We want to estimate that proportion with 95% confidence and assume no prior information. Using the proportion sample size formula, which is on your formula sheet, with E, the margin of error being 0.02, 
The critical Z value for 95% is 1.96. And here's the key with no prior information. We're going to assume that the proportion, the sample proportion, the proportion in the population is 0.5. That's called the conservative, est conservative estimate because it yields the highest possible, the highest possible uh, sample size needed. So using the sample size formula, which I would like you to write down whenever you do this problem, declares to me, it declares to me you're doing a sample size problem. For the proportion, the critical value is e sub c over e squared times p hat times 1 minus p hat using the data from this formula, from the, from the problem rather. That's 1.96 over 0 0.02 times 0 0.5 times 1 minus 0 0.5. And that actually comes out to be a whole number, 2401. So that would say a random sample of 2401 macroinvertebrates is needed in order to estimate the proportion of healthy indicators to within 2%. The other approach, which we called approach 1 in the earlier video, is we're going to use some information from a sample that's already been collected. So recall from the earlier video that a random sample of 168 macroinvertebrates invertebrates was selected, and that yielded uh, 62 healthy indicators. So 62 healthy indicators out of a 168 sample size macroinvertebrates. So the proportion of macroinvertebrates in the sample p hat is equal to 62 over 168 or 0 0.369. The initial sample, and we did this in an earlier video, and a 95% confidence interval yielded the margin of error, and I'll do those calculations for you. The critical value times square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat over n. When you use put the numbers in from the problem, sample size is 168, total sample size. p hat is 0 0.369. Again, make sure you use the decimals. That is rounded to two decimal places, 0 0.73 or 7.3 percent. What that says is that with that sample size of 168, we're going to be accurate in terms of estimating the true true proportion of healthy indicators to within about 7%. Well, what if we wanted to be a little more accurate? So to estimate the proportion of health, healthy indicators to within 2%, not 7%, but 2%, what size sample do we need to collect? So for that, again, we're going to use the sample size for the proportion formula, which is down here, only instead of assuming we have no information, we're going to use sort of our prior information. We know from this initial sample that an estimate of our proportion is 0.369. So we're going to use that as a pilot or a baseline data. So using the sample size formula with, again, the margin of error being 2% or 0.02, the critical value being 1.96, our baseline percentage of 0.369, Plugging that into your sample size for the proportion formula, you get 1.96 over 0.02 squared times 0.369 times 1 minus 0.369, and that gives you a total of 2,236.186 macroinvertebrates. Again, you cannot select a portion of a bug, you know, 0.186 of a bug, so you can only select whole numbers of bugs, and what we need to do here, the, the, the simple rounding rule, always round up. So round this up to 2,237. So that says, to estimate the proportion of healthy indicators to within 2%, a random sample of 2,237 macroinvertebrates is needed.